Hi everybody, it's Dystopian Wars Week here at On Tabletop, and we have two amazing prizes up for grabs. Our first prize is the Sturgenium Skies two-player starter set. For your chance to win, get your comments in on YouTube. Our second prize is the Hunt for the Prometheus two-player starter set. The winner for this prize will be chosen from comments on OnTabletop.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this introduction to Dystopian Wars. I'm joined by Chris from War Cradle Studios, who's Hello. going to be showing Justin and myself how you play through a turn of Dystopian Wars. Mm -hmm. So this, if you've never seen the game before, this will show you how the turn structure is based and the mechanics that you will find within the turn itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Chris, we've started off, we've got um, a Crown Fleet versus an Imperium Fleet. We do. A little cut down... Uh, sort of fish eye, little zoom in on yeah. a larger battle yeah. uh, to take us through this. So we have a couple of units aside each, or three units aside each. What's the first thing you do when you're playing in a turn? So the first thing is initiative. We need to determine who is going to take the first action. Okay. Uh, in order to do that, you take you choose a card from your hand mm -hmm. or victory and valor cards. Mm -hmm. In the top left hand corner is a number. Uh, you'll play one of those, and the player with the highest number will get the initiative. As we don't have a hand of cards for this little demo game, just draw the top card from your deck okay. and see what you've got. Ah, 21. Again, I, I'm 48, <laughs> which is much closer to my age and cynicism. <laughs> uh, well, that, so, that's as young as I feel. Jerry, you've got the initiative, so okay. we then move on to the activation um, phase of the game, which means that each of you will take turns in activating a unit, starting with Jerry, who okay. has initiative, until every unit has activated once. And oh, once nice. that's all done, we're at the end of the round, and we do some mop-up and bits. Okay. So, Jerry, it's over to you. Pick a unit yeah. to activate. What would you like? Uh, I have choices. I've got um, a unit of Tintagel uh, routers. I've got a unit of uh, Newfoundland cruisers, and then I have a hotspur out on the flank. Uh, and when you activate, is it everything in one go, or do we complete all the movement step and then all the shooting step? Or? Yep, so you, you take it a step at a time. So there's the operation step at the beginning, then movement, then shooting, then assaults, and then kind of the repair phase at the end of that. Okay. And then that's all self-contained unit by unit. It is, yep, absolutely. Right, in that case, I'm going to start off with my Newfoundland. Um, they seem primed to be main, mainline assaulters. Okay, so we start off with movement. The very first thing every ship has to do is drift. This is a compulsory movement, and it represents the, um, the inertia of those ships as they push their way either through the air or through the water, depending on what their medium is. Okay. Is it the same for everyone? Though? It is. No, it's the same. Well, it's the, the mass of the unit that you're moving. So okay. the Newfoundlands are mass two, therefore they will drift two inches forward. We know they're mass two because on the stat line for the Newfoundland, the M, which mm. is the mass, mm -hmm. is a two. That's the first stat. Okay. So this must be in a straight line. That's right. Absolutely straightforward. And I will just go from that point to that point. Uh, do I drift both in the you, do, you drift both of them and then you do the and movement do for the each movement. of them. Yep. So everybody drifts at the same time, but they move one at a time? Yeah, so you do, each one does their drift movement and then each one does their movement. Okay, so I've drifted. Uh, I then have my movement. So, yep, so we're looking at speed, which is the S. Okay. And that's in inches, so that can move seven inches. Uh, when you turn, any movement is in a direct straight line. If you right. want to make a turn, you have to use the turning template, which you have there. Okay. You place the turning template on the side of the ship, and then you move that around one notch, and that's one turn. That takes away one inch of movement okay. and takes up uh, from your turn limit. Okay, so I've got a, activation. a speed of seven and a turn of five. So the Newfoundlands are quite nippy. Yep, so they can move seven inches in total. Five of those can be turns. All right, in that case, and I don't have to use my full... You don't have to move your full no. movement, no. So, let me see. I'm going to start by going 
forward. Mm -hmm. So that's four inches off. Yep. And then I want to uh, bring guns to bear. So five, six, seven will bring me to there. Excellent. And the second ship uh, in a similar fashion. I will. Can you crash into your own ships? You can, absolutely. One, two, three. So. It's difficult to do in a unit because you choose which one you move first. Mm -hmm. But of course, remember, everything has to drift. So. True, so, but if you've maybe messed up your activations and moved into a position where something then has to activate and drift in. It happens more often than you'd like to think it would. <laughs> Okay, uh, so movement is done. What's the next step? So the next step is shooting. What we do with shooting, every weapon has a fire arc. So mm -hmm. if you look on the on the stat line for the weapon, you'll see next to it um, F, P and S, for example, for yes. a heavy gun battery on a turret. That means it can fire either in the forward, the port or the starboard arc. Okay, so the, it can pivot to wherever it needs to. It can. I the, also have a, a broadside port and starboard. That's right, that means it can fire both port and starboard in the same okay. activation. And finally, I have a torpedo salvo that is front. So it only fires in the front uh, arc. The only thing you have in the front arc for either of those ships is an aerial unit. Mm -hmm. Now, torpedoes are submerged, which means they can't actually fire at an aerial unit. Mm -hmm. And yes, I can see you're measuring the, the fire arcs there. So fire arcs are 90 degrees. The fore is directly to the front, the aft is directly to the rear, and then port and starboard left and right, respectively. Okay. Um, so I have a few weapons here. You do. Torpedoes are out which is a terrible shame, but um, I've got two heavy gun batteries per ship and a broadside for yep. each ship. How do you go about shooting? So what you do is you allocate all of the shots. So you designate where they're all going to go before you roll any dice. Mm -hmm. That way it means that if you destroy a ship and you've still got attacks to make, you lose those attacks. So okay. you've got to be careful how you're allocating those shots. So shells are in the air. Absolutely, it's all simultaneous. And when you're shooting, you designate to a specific unit or a specific ship within it's a, the unit? It's a specific model. However, there is a rule where if you destroy a model um, in a unit mm -hmm. and you still have attacks to allocate to that model, you can track those over to another model in the, in the same unit. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start with the heavy gun batteries. Uh, they have three range bands. So are the range bands set to weapons or are the range bands set to a standard size for they're everybody? They're universal. So okay. it's a standard size for everybody and they're all 10 inches. So point blank is within 10 inches, closing 20 and long is 30. Can you pre-measure or do you have to? You can pre-measure at any time. Okay, so I don't have to designate where I'm going to go until I make sure I can actually do the most damage. Correct. So I know uh, this ship is definitely well within range here. Yep. And it would be... One thing you can do is combine your attacks. Okay. So if you look at the weapon um, profiles, you'll see that for each range band, they roll a number of dice mm -hmm. equal to the number in that in that column. So as an example, the heavy gun battery, a point blank range rolls six dice. The number in brackets next to it shows the number of dice you roll if you are combining those attacks. Okay. So if you want to attack with all four heavy gun batteries individually, you'll roll six dice for each one. Mm -hmm. But if you want to add them, you're adding three dice uh, in addition to the six for so the lead Jerry weapon. So Jerry could have two primaries and a secondary supporting each, or have yep. one primary and three secondary supporting each? Correct, yep. Okay. And because they're in a unit, they can combine their firepower. Right. So when I'm attacking, is there a specific number I'm looking to reach? That's absolutely correct. So the number of successes from the dice are then um, compared to the armor value of the mm -hmm. ship, which is the A attribute. So six. Every time you beat that number, you do a point of damage. All right. So, so if you do over 12, you're doing two. 18 is three, as an example. So while I could fire all of them individually, I'd need to hit six every time. And yep. if you're only rolling six dice, it's tricky. And then that's why you want to combine on some occasions. Correct. Then yes. there's the next level. That is. So the critical effect, critical hits. 
uh, if you breach the citadel with your successes on an attack, which is the C yep. attribute, twelve, then you do a critical hit. So you roll one of these horrible dice here that show a particular critical effect that 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 will hamper that ship going forward mm. and possibly do some catastrophic explosions. Mm. Okay, right. In that case, I know I've got one ship that's closing. Uh, second ship is also going to be closing because it's uh, closest to you're, closest. You're within 10, so that's actually point blank oh, on Point both. blank, sorry. I mean, point blank yes. was the one I was after, yes. Um, so in this case, I would get point blank is six uh, and then three for supporting. So I could... You could fire at the rear ship in that unit. Oh, at which point I may get a few more. You, which means you'll, you'll get a bit more bang for your buck. Mm. Yeah. That is the thing. The different weapons are effective at different ranges. So knowing your weapons, knowing your ranges is going to be key. And when you have a mix of, for example, that rear ship mm -hmm. in your Newfoundland squadron is within point blank. Yes. So it uses the point blank stats, whereas the one at the front will use, sorry, will use its closing yes. mm -hmm. um, stats. Yeah. So you, you mix and match depending on where that particular model is. Yeah. And don't forget you're measuring closest point to closest points. You can't you can't you try can't and fudge angle. that. Oh, yeah. no, no. Fudge it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to lead the shot, but not that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'd actually get uh, at closing, I'd get nine dice and four supporting. Um, so I think I'll fire at the rear ship and fire individually. So I'll get... Uh, each ship individually? Each, each ship individually. Okay. So I'll, I'll get one, one burst of nine dice and another burst of 13 dice. Um, and then the... Broadsides that I have. Yes. Do they have to fire at the same ship that I'm designating the gun batteries at? No, they can fire at anything. You can okay. split your shots any way you like. Don't forget, all of the gun crews are independent crews, so they can they can pick and choose their targets depending on what's so what's the officer going at that one. Okay. Yes. And they're much better at point blank. They are much better, uh, so, considerably better. So in that case, blank. I will combine all my shots into one point blank salvo at the closest ship then. Uh, so this guy here then? A yes. Good, a solid choice, sir. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will start. Uh, so I need to sort out my dice and I'll do the broadside first. So six for my main gun. And then three additional dice for the second broadside. So that's my nine. Now, this has a, a quality called Fusillade. Yes. Which means that you are allowed to re-roll any counter results that you get. Oh, that's good. Hopefully we won't get any, but we'll see now. Okay, so it's that's a, a, a spread of dice. What are we looking at? So, uh, you first of all, you get to re-roll. So, you've got... Um, f you've got three counter dice there, so you uh, re-roll all three of those. heavy counters count differently for this? No, it's all counters. Ah. That's all types of counter. Okay. So these three I get to re-roll because of my ability. Yep. Which has added some more hits. Uh -huh. It has. But you've... Uh, so when we're looking at the dice, mm -hmm. you're looking at red results. That's what you want for hits. The single is one. Yep. The double is two. And then this Dystopian Wars logo is an exploding hit, mm. which means it counts for two hits and you get to roll additional dice for each. Okay. So it's one additional dice for each of those exploding hits. And so then they're added to your pool. I'll roll two more then. Oh, that was unfortunate. Yep. Yep. But I have in this case done one, two, four, six, eight, 10 damage from my broadside. So that will be a point of damage. Okay. So one point of damage. So if we use the blue ones, sure. they count as uh, battle ready damage. Okay. It was on the closest one, right? Closest, yes. Yep. This is my ah. broadside. Just add that point of damage there. Okay. Um, and no, no breach of the citadel, unfortunately. Uh, so no, no critical just... hit there. Okay, well, that's Move all right. Move on to the big guns, I've shall got we? the big guns. So that's got my range in. Uh, so for my heavy battery, uh, and this is going to be um, two separate shots, so one at closing and one at point blank. So six dice plus three, that's my point blank. Yep. Okay, back it to me. Ooh. Now, Could my heavy better. gun battery <laughs> has got just gunnery. Yep, so there's no special rules that apply in this situation. So you're rolling an extra two dice for your exploding hits. Okay, so take away the counters and blanks. 
Oh. No, well, more of the same. So that's six damage, which I think is just enough to do one yeah. point of damage. Yeah. Pipped six at the post. hits. Okay. So I'll move that out of the way. And there's a two down. And then the final one will be in. Sorry, that damage was actually on the rear yeah. ship, wasn't it? Uh, the, one, the one slightly further back. So you got apologies. one point of damage on each. This is why we need to declare beforehand. That way yes. you don't get your opponent shifting damage around sneakily. Yes. Not that you would do that. No, never. Of course not. Okay, so then putting together my final raking shot. And this is nine and four. So this is 13. So three. Come on, make it count. Six. I mean, with, with 13 dice, that's that's the balance is building bigger pools to break that Citadel versus getting more shots to do more individual points of damage. Yep. Oh, that's oh, more like it's it. It's looking good. So, again, we'll pluck out the counters those, and the blanks. All those pesky blue dice. Hmm. And we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 already, and yep. four roll-ups from yep. my exploding. Mm -hmm. I like that critical symbol. It's nice. It's good. More of that, please. Another one. No, uh, another one. Do I roll again? You do. Okay. You keep, they keep going. It's, but I'm, I'm weakening. Oh, oh again. I'm not Go weakening that much. Oh, I ran, ran it's good. So, with that in mind, then, we have... Oh, that was a critical. Uh, so, I've got... Eight, 19 points. 16, 18, 19. 19. What, how does that equate, Justin? Let's see what damage that does. So, my armor is a base of six. Yep. So, I that's believe that's three, three times. Points. So, it's, it's how many, how many yep. times you divide into it. So that's right, yeah. One Citadel as well. Yep. Okay. So, that's a critical hit. So, three points of damage, and then you get to roll one of these. Yes. So, you were on one, that puts you up to four. Yes, which means I am now, unfortunately, crippled. You say, unfortunately, we don't really mind that, do we? Well, let, let's see how critical this damage is. So the critical dice. Oh, it's a so. navigation lock. Mm. So you keep that dice next to the ship to <laughs> denote that you have that critical. Mm -hmm. um, and it means you can't turn. You have a turn limit of zero. Oh my. So you cannot make turns in your movement step. You biz marked me. Okay. That's terrible. Except not really. Um, that is my Newfoundland style. The important thing here is, uh, with those critical conditions, if you take the same critical condition on the same ship again, mm -hmm. then instead of adding another another dice to it, you just take two whole points of damage as you as you cause a catastrophic explosion okay. within and the... cascades throughout yeah, the ship. Yeah, so racking up those different criticals can certainly make a make a difference uh, breaking the seals on the steam pipes mm. okay right. well that's me done so okay. you're on to your first initiative then justin mm. what to do all right uh i think i'm going to start with something that's not taking a beating mm -hmm. just to be most effective uh my kriegsturm assault airship so this gentleman right down here so massive two so it will drift forward two so uh one two to there now, for my speed, I am a speed of eight, and I have a turn limit of five. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to barrel straight into you. Just, just quickly, normally, if you were to cross paths with another ship, mm -hmm. you would have a collision. Yes. And then you, you can take some damage or some disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not great to do that. However, this is an aerial unit, which means it operates at a, a different level to the mm -hmm. surface ships, and so it can therefore fly directly over those mm -hmm. cruisers if it wants to. Um, I have a cunning plan. <laughs> so I'm going to turn one, two, three, and then I'm going to go forward right along to about here and stop there. Because if I'm right and I've done it right, I should have... Mm, well, I've got this one in a broadside and I've got this one in my front arc, which mm -hmm. I think is okay. So we'll do that. Super. So we're on, we're on to shooting then. Mm. So I have two weapons on here. So I'll grab my handy dandy weapon sheet and we'll work out what we've got. So Uber Volk uh, Verling is... 
it's good at closing and up close and personal, so point blank. And then the other one is my flak broadside, which is better up close. So yes, I've done the right thing. So flak broadside is going to go into this ship mm -hmm. and my Uber into the front one. Okay. So my Uber Volk Verling is going to get 14 dice. Yikes. That's, so, that's a heavy hitter, that is. Sounds bad. Five, five and four. So we'll see how this. Mm -hmm. feels. Do you have any, any qualities on there of note? Uh, sustained and voltaic. Okay, so sustained means you get to choose one result after you've rolled your initial pull mm -hmm. and re roll that particular okay. result. Um, and voltaic mm -hmm. is interesting. Uh, it's on, in fact, it's in your, on the top of your orbat. Uh, top of my orbat, where here? Yep, voltaic. Okay, so it's on the front page. <clears throat> uh, should the initial target suffer one or more critical damage markers uh, from an action with this quality, it additionally receives a disorder condition if the initial target has an online shield generator, storm generator, or guardian generator, and suffers critical damage from this action, then a critical damage result from the hit is char charged to the generator offline. Change to the generator, oh, change offline. To generator offline, critical damage marker. So it automatically blows up generators. Mm -hmm. Which is a good way to get some catastrophic explosions. Mm. I'll take that. So I need to decide what I am re-rolling. So pull stuff together. I think it's going to be my blanks because I've got four of those. Okay. Versus everything else. Yep. Oh, we'll take that, definitely. Worth it. Very nice. So I get to roll four additionals with the six damage. Oh, yes, we'll take that. Okay, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus an additional eight, 18 points of damage, my good sir. Yikes. 18's good. Uh, I have an armor of six, so three points of damage. Yep. And my citadel is 11, so a single critical. Okay. So, yep. Uh, that would be... It's a generator offline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the voltaic quality, because yep. you've you've done mm -hmm. a critical damage, you do another one. Uh -huh. It has a generator, so mm -hmm. it's a generator offline result, which means it's a catastrophic explosion. So that's a total of five points of damage, because you points. get an extra two for the catastrophic explosion. Mm -hmm. You get to keep that marker, which means it's, it's guardian generator is no longer of any use. That was uh, this one because this was yeah. in my front arc. Okay, so I'll put one there. Mm -hmm. Ow! That's some uh, some spiciness. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the other thing I have is the flak broadside port and starboard. So mm -hmm. I'm only firing one of them, and our flak broadside says uh, five dice. So nothing super special, but you know okay. I might take a chip out of you. There's five to begin. Okay, you uh, need to be lucky on the special. roll up. Uh, they have broadside and sustained, but it's got in brackets aerial. So is that only aerial units? Now? It is only aerial units that they are sustained against. Okay. So unfortunately, this is a surface unit, so you don't get that. Uh -huh. And the broadside simply means it can fire both of its weapons yep. either side of it. Cool. Well, I get one more to roll. Oh. For nothing. Oh, so unfortunately. It's five points. You unfortunate. fell short so of I my armor. I've, I've whiffed it. Yeah. So that's no damage. Yeah, and I do believe that is uh, that one complete. That was an impressive yeah. bit of shooting. That, that's a lot of shooting. So, so, so Jerry, over to you. What would you like to activate? Well, is there anything else that can do? Oh, We've yes, there shooting, is. A very good done. question. Sorry. We move on to assaults. Uh, now, because you're in four inches of um, an enemy, you may choose to assault something. Mm -hmm. With assaults, the... The risk is that you could be counter-assaulted. Ah. So you have to be careful that you're rolling the right amount of dice. You don't want to assault something that's likely to uh, be Batter more powerful than you. Yes. Yeah. Repel so borders. It, yeah. In order to assault, you, um, you count your fray mm -hmm. attribute, so which is the nine. F. Yep. Not bad. So you roll that, mm -hmm. and you're looking to... Um, uh, defend, so Jerry, you're looking yep. to defend with your citadel mm -hmm. plus um, 
you'll get an additional um, dice for your supporting. Okay, so my Citadel's 11. I'll get one more for supporting. Puts me yep. up to 12. Yeah. Uh, so you also get to add your um, the highest defense that you have as well. Okay. Uh, now, because I'm coming from the air, does it have to be you, the aerial? You beat me to it, Justin. Ah. Um, in the case where you're being attacked by uh, an aerial submerged unit, you have to use that particular defense. Okay. Well, my defenses, thankfully, are both four. Well, I say that. Mm -hmm. You can choose any of them. Oh, I'm going after your crippled one. So the one. crippled one. <laughs> so in that case, my defense will only be three. Uh, and my dangerous. citadel will be reduced to 10. Uh -huh. So five, 10, one first friend, and three. So that is my pull for my defense. I will be going ahead with this, just yeah. because let's show everybody at home. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, rolly roll. Mm -hmm. Oh, ho. Okay, so we've got that for a start. Do the dice still explode in a Yep, so it's exactly the same as, as when you're doing shooting. Attack, ooh. One more. Oh, and Another. again. I've changed my mind. I don't like the dystopian war assembly coming up so much. <laughs> okay, so there's 10, 16 total. Okay, okay. so we've got 16. Remember 16. Mm -hmm. And you're rolling my quite 16. a few dice in defense. Quite a few, which is despite, good. despite being crippled. And I'm looking for the counter symbols this time. Oh, which I don't see many of. No, so the double, double counters count as two. And the single counters count as one. So that's nine. So nine from your 16 uh -huh. leaves you with seven. Mm. Yes. So let's look at what that means. So, so the on the this assault. Is working is you're tallying Jerry's counters off my final. That's right. However, the difference between us is telling us what's happening. Correct. Okay. So, for example, if Jerry rolled more counters than your attacks, mm -hmm. then he might counterattack and do some damage to you. Uh -huh. So seven hits is catastrophic. Target receives a critical damage roll and a catastrophic explosion. Oh my. So your your assaulting troops have planted bombs, they've been assaulting delicate areas of the ship. Pouring salt water into my generators. <laughs> yes. All of these things. You know, sugar so, in the gas tank. So roll, roll that. Okay, let's see what we get. Come on. Okay. That's really defences. That means that uh, you no longer roll any defences against any incoming attack. Okay. Do I take additional points of damage as normal based on the difference, or is this solely a way no, of doing critical? No, it's, it's solely a way of doing critical. So, yeah. And you get a catastrophic ex explosion. Sorry, that's two damage anyway. So that will push me yeah. to three. Three. Which leaves you on one. Yeah, well, they, they've had a good innings. He did a lot of damage early on. I'm not you know, If he does go down bubbling now, I'm not going to feel terrible. Mm -hmm. I'd feel it, worse if he just ran off. <laughs> it does show the, the power of those exploding dice sometimes. Oh, it, it really does. Risk. You just don't know. It's always worth rolling the dice because you just don't know what you might get. Right, so, so that's the end of your activation, Justin. Yes. Jerry, we're over to you now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring up some air support of my own. I think the uh, Tintagels are on their way. Uh, so these are also flyers. They only have a mass of one, so a one-inch drift. Oh, light little things. They do, however, have Agile, which means that they can make turns during their drift. They can, yes. Uh, instead of having to go straight forward, which and is they, good. they have a turn of, of six. So they have a they turn can... of six, so they're very, very nimble indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, the drift turn wouldn't take off their turn value, would it? It does. Oh, it does. Okay, so I'm still limited in that regard. Um, looking at what they have, which is Torpedo sal Salvos Front and Aft, don't think I'm going to be too worried. Uh, I think I'm going to get up for the rocket battery attack. So we'll do our drift first. So a little one inch there, and a one inch here, and then just plow forward, hell for leather for the horizon. And being aerial, you're happily just zooming over to rain. Yep. So there's nothing. Absolutely. There. And then this one. Meow. Go to there and I will. Can I block line of sight between? You can. Okay, so if I stand in the, the wrong place or stay in the wrong place, then. Yep. Uh, uh, if you're firing at something larger, for example, mm -hmm. if you were shooting at the Stark Imperium, yeah. 
then anything smaller than the Stark Imperium doesn't block your line of sight. Yeah. Um, surface ships don't block your line of sight either because you're aerial. Okay. That's the same with uh, any surface terrain. All right. So you just have to be an arc and be able to draw a line of sight from closest point to closest point, and you should still be okay. So in this case, I can still give a uh, rocket battery to this uh, beautiful Zeppelin in front of me. You sure you don't want to fire your torpedoes? There's a ship right there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I, well, I wouldn't be able to anyway because the torpedoes got a minimum before they, uh, they oh, lock right. in. So in this case, my ship is safe from my own crew's incompetence. Fear not. <laughs> Uh, but again, you tally up in the same way. So my rockets have got, um, where are we? It's not a heavy rocket battery. It's no, just, just a regular, rocket, yeah, what a rocket terrible battery. shame. Uh, so the, the lighter flavor of high explosive love. So it's five, uh, five at point blank. Yep. Uh, with an additional one for support. Uh, you have an armor of... Uh, armor is six on the Kriegstrom with a Citadel of 11. Okay, so I will combine uh, my so little rockets to a chunky least airship, that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully my six dice will give me something. Um, we also have broadsides. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be in arc for broadsides for either. Oh, I would be for one. I'd give it to you. It's very generous of you. I wouldn't. I'm a terrible person. I, in that case, I will combine my broadsides as well. Uh, so we'll do the rockets first. Mm -hmm. So six dice of rocket. Mm -hmm. The rocket battery has just the aerial quality. And in this case, well, that's good. I'm glad I combined mm -hmm. because I'm beating your armor. I'm with one exploding. There we are. So, so eight. Eight. Uh, I've got some bad news for you, Jerry. Yes. Because this attack has the aerial quality, mm. Justin gets to use his aerial defences uh, against it. Okay, so, so your eight ADV may not be enough, right? on your on your attributes. How many dice do you have there? Four. So roll mm. four dice. You're looking for counters. Oh, it's Probably got three, three, three counters. Three, so it takes it down to five. Which is not enough. Not enough. So you've no, you've intercepted our... enough of those rockets to to stop you from taking some damage, which okay is very good news. Uh, however, I do have my light broadside, uh, which has got a point blank uh, main gun of four with three for support. Yep, and so that's a fuselage weapon, so you're going to re-roll all of your counter results. Oh, well, that's generally Heavy good for me, light. because there's yep. often many of those in the dice tray. There we go. A little more Just spicy. the one. Yep. For a re-roll and one for an exploding. Yep. Uh, just as a first. just as a point of order, you, you do your re-rolls first, yep. and then you roll your exploding dice. So that's my re-roll. Well, there's your exploding. You now get two. Yep. yep. Oh, that's good. You don't re-roll. You don't because you've done that re-roll step. Okay. So yeah. once you and you and, and that's why the steps are yeah, yeah, that's your, your in that point order. of order. Yep. yep. Okay, so we have. Uh, 10, 12 points oh, on you. Yikes. And that... you can't intercept that because it's not aerial. No. Mm -hmm. no. Well, that will be uh, two points of damage onto mm -hmm. me. And as well as that, a wonderful critical. Ooh. Nice. I will. Let's see what you get. Hopefully I'll get that your engines are off or you'll puncture G and you just drift off like a balloon. Oh, okay, right. So this is interesting. That's uh, a new symbol. This I is, don't know if I like that new This symbol. is a Stiginium flare. Uh, so... What have you done, you horrible you're, man? You're filled with the uh, Dystopian Wars equivalent of hydrogen. So some, ah. something's happened to the engine which has caused a surge of power to push through the, the engines and, and push that ship forward. Good. So, so it suffers a point of damage and moves a number of inches equal to its mass directly forward. Um, it would be a collision if it was normally a, a, be a collision. bound thing, but in this case, yes. floating and therefore so not too bad. We, we have an unusual interaction here, which hmm. is a great opportunity to show how this works because two inches is not enough room to clear that model entirely, mm -hmm. which means that you push it back until Oh, it's, so I push that model back? No, no, no. You put, so your movement gets pushed back to a point where it doesn't overlap the model. <laughs> so I, in which case, so, you actually really don't move yeah, at all. Moving. You I kind just, of inch forward that, there. That, that, that little millimetre. Yeah. yeah. And if that had been a, another ocean-going 
vessel, there would have been a collision. That would have been, yeah, that would have been a collision, and we would have had to resolve how that works. Aren't you lucky you're floating around? Uh, Well done, Tintagel, though. That was good. Wonderful, peaceful skies of uh, the dystopian age. Anything else that you'd like to do with your Tintagel? Uh, I would love to assault as well, I think. I think that would be a a fantastic idea. Um, Are you within four inches with With, one of those? I'm within four with one. I don't know if I'm within four from the other. Just check. No. But I believe you can still support with that one that's behind. Uh, Let me just... So you can't assault. Okay. Um, You can't can't support, Support. I apologise, because you're not within four inches of the initial target. So it's just that that first Tintagel, which is doing a solo assault. Only got a fray of four. What's your Citadel? Uh, 11, and then my aerial defense is an additional four, so 15. Are you sure you would like to send your Rocketeer battalion into the Kriegsturm? It's it's interesting. And its weaponry ready to... It's interesting you say Rocketeer because the Rocketeer ability means that I can assault an enemy model within six inches instead of four, which at that point it does bring in. I was waiting to see whether you'd notice that. So in that case, yes, I will. So my fray of four um, is actually is six. Or six. If you're if you're uh, supporting, okay, I'm, I'm still giving it a punt because those have to come up something. It's already a bit crippled. A little bit. I might be able to sink it. Well, I am actually quite lucky because you were one point off crippling me, which would have knocked a few dice off. Okay. Mm. Well, let's see how this works, shall we? Okay. Jerry, let's have a look at your roll. Our survey says. Oh, not great, but I do have a roll up. There is always hope. So my exploding. No, it doesn't. Just the four. Four. So I, I feel like the tintagels are about to be knocked out of the sky by counter battery. Um, the counter attacks aren't anywhere near as lethal mm. as the actual attacks can be. So, especially when I roll like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight counters. Mm-hmm which is what you want. So the difference is four, four four counters. So it's a counter assault. The assaulting model suffers a point of damage and a disorder condition. Oh, double all. So one one hazard Uh, and one point of damage. One of them, even though the other one was supporting. Yep, so it's it's the one that initiated the attack Mm -hmm. rather than the supporting one. I like to think that that's my my chef on board, that airship, (laughs) who's just a little bit of a madman with a machine gun. (laughs) Right. So he takes a single point and disorder. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that is all I can do. That's all I want it's to do. It's not, because we're at the first stage now where a unit has activated Ooh. and it has some kind of critical damage oh. or disorder. So you do actually get to repair. Okay. So you might be able to calm the ship down. Your captain takes control of the situation and starts to bring order back to the chaos, okay. fighting the fires that are on board and whatever damage the counterattack's done. So you get to roll, for each ship in that unit, you get to roll a number of dice equal to its mass. Okay. So they're only mass one. Yep. So you get to roll a single die. But I only have one. And you only have one. Point yep. of disorder on there. So, And you just roll a regular action die? A regular action die, yep. Okay, I got a crit. For every counter or heavy counter rolled, you may remove either a critical damage marker or reduce its disorder level by one. Mm. You didn't get any. So I did. Got so none. unfortunately, there is no repair being made on that ship. Too busy. One time of day where that symbol is not good for you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> D- defenses are often like that. But no, that's okay. We didn't repair that little bit of disorder, but I'm sure we'll bring the men around the next time. So, Jerry, you're done. I'm done. To me, then. What would you like, Justin? I'm thinking I like the look. I want to see, I've been waiting to do this, see the big boy. (laughs) I want to see what he does. So we'll have a little look-see at what he gets up to. Okay, so you activate the Stark Imperium. Okay, so first things first, he is going to need to drift, yeah? No, first of all, you do the operation step. Uh, The Stark Imperium is a carrier, so it has loads of fighters and bombers that it can launch. Ah, into uh, into the enemy. So you have a stack of six, I believe, capacity of, of that. Sorry, uh, eight. 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 Uh, which, handily enough, we have right here at the front. Mm-hmm. Now, you can split those amongst targets, or you can try and 
bundle them onto a, a single target, do as much damage as you can. Don't forget there is an interception stage, so the the um, the SRS tokens can be intercepted. Okay. How far away can I plant these? Forty guys? inches. Forty inches. Okay. Um, Pretty much everybody is fair game, right? Now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but honestly, these have annoyed me by attacking these first. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm probably going to stack everybody right onto this front one of your ships here. Okay. Because he hasn't really took much damage. No, I, I want to see what happens unscathed. when he, he takes a bombing run. Uh, okay. Is that all I do with that for this part of it? Yep, that's it. You you simply allocate them, and then we move on to the movement. So drift so, away. All uh, right. Now, he has a massive four, but a special ability he has is lumbering. So I'm only drifting for uh, three. So a one, two, three to there. Uh, speed of six, turn of four. So I think I am just going to begin turning in right away. So uh, a one. Two, three, is that enough? I think that's enough. Right. So, this being a bigger ship, it has quite a few weapons, so this may take a moment. <clears throat> so, I have Verling autocannons, four thereof. Mm -hmm. I have a Sturmbringer, and I have a heavy flak broadside. So, I think the Sturmbringer, uh, if you can give me the arcs, Jerry. Uh, so, like so. I would say he's out of arc for the Sturmbringer, yep. so I will mm -hmm. plant it into your aircraft carrier up there. And then my Verlings and my Heavy Flak Broadside is going to go straight into the damaged ship. Nice. Now, I have four of the Verling uh, autocannons. Mm -hmm. At point blank, they are five apiece with mm, a okay. support of four. There's the what's, what's your armor? Six, is it? Um, Crippled, still six. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I'm gonna do this is two sets of nine. I think is the best option here. For the is that the fairest way of killing me? <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's that or I go for a big punt and try and go for the, the coup de grace. But I think I should be able to do it in two sets of nine and then my flak if I have to use it. So let's see what we get. Oh, that'll maybe do it. So, I've got that. Anything interesting on it? Uh, it is sustained, but only against aerial and skimming units. Okay. So Which I will get it's not. Two extra dice to roll for explodings. That was not a roll, that was a drop. Uh, nothing extra. So that will be a grand tally of eight. eight. Okay, so I'll take another point of damage, which brings that up to four. That Which is sunk blah, blah, blah. Yep, so that's yeah. gone. Remove it from the table. Mm. Now, I had two other uh, weapon systems going in there. Yep. However, as we sit here, can I see this guy to shoot this guy? You, you can, I think, uh, from the center. I think that's line of sight is blocked. Mm. By his flying friend. Yes, so. and it is aerial, and it is the same mass as the target, which means it does obscure so and does do block line of shots. sight. So you, yes, normally you would be able to track those over to another another model in the unit, but because line of sight is blocked there, unfortunately he can't be chosen. So okay. you've lost those additional shots. Oh. But let why don't we cheer you up oh. <laughs> by firing the Sternbringer? Sternbringer. <laughs> because just, this is a very nice weapon. <laughs> Right, so uh, I need to work out what range I'm at to begin with. So is it, I would say that's closing? It is, yes. Okay, so at closing, the Sturmbringer is not as effective as it would be at point blank, which is unfortunate, but still a V. So I will get seven dice, mm -hmm. and then its abilities. It has gunnery, sustained, devastating, and arc. So there's four things to look at, Chris. What do we so got? sustained allows you to re-roll one type of result okay. once you've rolled the, the pool, which is always handy. Mm -hmm. Devastating means that exploding hits do three successes oh, rather gosh. than the normal two. And arc, mm -hmm. well, arc will um, do an additional critical hit. Let me just mm -hmm. double check that. 
Um, shield generators are ignored. Should the initial target suffer critical damage from this quality, it gains a disorder condition um, in addition to any others that may be applied by the action. So you're doing additional disorder as long as you get a crit. Okay, bring it down with the Stuart Bringer. Oh, oh, that oh. Is... oh, you've chunked No, hang on a second. Like... You've got a sustain, don't forget. Yes, now I don't know what that was, so I'm going to discount it because I knocked it over. Okay. I'm, so I'm quite content for you to take it as two hits. I think, yeah, I think it was a, um, it was a, I think it was a double, yeah, double counter, so you can okay. re-roll that one. Well, I'll re-roll. Come on, treat me nice. Nope. Oh, so, three. Damn. Somebody forgot to change the batteries today. <laughs> it. it didn't make me feel better, it made me feel sad. Like, whenever you pick up the remote, to change the TV channel, she's like, where is it? That's okay. not enough to breach the armor, I'm guessing. It is I'm not guessing. enough to breach my armor of six. No. However, yes. am I within four? And does line of sight affect assaults? So line of sight does not affect assaults. And I am within four. So you can so. actually Wee. assault that Newfoundland. Yes, so uh, assault, so my freight is 10. Mr. McCabe. Yes. You will need your Citadel yeah, and your Aerial Defense. Uh, it's 11. Oh, Aerial Defense against you is 4, so 15. 15. 10 versus 15. I want to try it. Go I'll for it. it. Give it a go. Don't forget, you, you, there are more hits and there are counters. Mm -hmm. And hits explode. Yes. So even if you're equal dice. Yeah, on the curve. You're, yes. You're, you're actually, you've got an advantage. Wow. Okay. So I get... Three additional rolls. Another one. No. Okay, let's see how many we got here. So there's eight, 12, 15. 13, 14, 15. I'll take a 15. See what you can do about that, Jerry. Yeah. I imagine I'll just uh, block them all. It's a very rambunctious crew. They've mm -hmm. been drinking all day. Oh, they're quite rambunctious. It's good. Four, six, yes, ten, twelve, thirteen. Wow! Ooh, told you they're a rambunctious crew. Spicy. So we take thirteen away from fifteen. 15. So two leaves through. us with two. That's still havoc. Okay. So the target receives a point of damage and a disorder condition. All right. I will take that. Here's my first point of damage for them though, so that's quite good. I'll find a... There we go. Mm -hmm. Splendid. But wow. I've survived an assault from the uh, Stark Imperium, <laughs> and I think that will go on the Battle Honours whenever we get home. <laughs> I survived uh, if it makes assault. it through the rest of this Did round, we'll see. Have yeah. metal. Okay. So, are we done with the Stark Imperium? Uh, so that's all the weapons fired, you've got I, no repairs to roll. So, launched SRS, moved. Did my shooting, uh, nothing to repair, and did my assault, so I believe, yeah. Okay, so I'm left Jerry, with... the hotspur. My hotspur, the Tottingham. Uh, it is also a carrier. It is. It also has SRS. So in so, the operation step, we launch them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get a stack of eight. My SRS are four. So you have a choice. You can you can put those against a, a target to do an attack run, mm -hmm. or you can stack them on your Newfoundland right. in order to hopefully mitigate some of the uh, yeah. horrendous damage that might be incoming from that attack run. So intercept some of these terrible uh, Imperium dive bombers with some fighters of my own. Ooh, come on, don't fight. Let's it's go. all very uh, busy in uh, the centre of the table. I there, think I will one hundred percent do that because as much fun as trying to sink one of those um, frigates over or destroyers over there. I, I really want my Newfoundland to stay upright. Sure. So launch those uh, and then drift. Yep, onto your drift move. Okay. Uh, mass of two. So I will go up to there. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I'm a support carrier. I'm not going forward. I have a <laughs> torpedo salvo in the front. There, there are reasons that aircraft carriers have a support fleet around them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm not going to move any further forward and instead uh, fire torpedoes. Ooh. Just for novelty value. Why not? I mean, we've got uh, a couple of likely looking targets in front of me, one of which is very close to being crippled. 
Yes. Uh, well, so, he's in fact crippled. Oh, he is? Oh, because yeah, he's yeah. in the four, yeah. 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 He's taken all of his, yes. his battle already. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's rudderless at the moment. <laughs> Yeah. Oh well. What, so what he's a very good target to go yeah. for because his defences are going to be lower. Yep. And if you get a critical and you hit that critical, mm -hmm. then you'll be doing extra damage oh, with a catastrophic explosion. So. Uh, so three things to look at: submerged torpedo and extreme range. Um, yes. So torpedo just means uh, it can't be obscured. Mm -hmm. um, extreme range means you can fire at forty inches. And submerged means he gets his submerged defences against him. Okay. So even though long kicks in room at 30 or so, you can go overboard. You with can the, go up to 40 extreme, inches, yeah, okay. with extreme nice. range. All right. In that case, I think I will check, but I'm fairly certain I'm going to be uh, closing. Yep. And I am. So over 10. Which is good. That's good. Not that it really matters for Torpedo Salvo because it's um, seven for point blank and seven for closing. And it's yep. only six when you go to long and extreme. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, torpedoes are good. We like torpedoes. Uh, so seven dice. We don't like torpedoes. We love torpedoes. I will go for this mm -hmm. and hopefully sink one of yours in retribution. Oh, not with a roll like that, I won't. Oh, 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 mama. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so moving swiftly on. <laughs> you, you need to work with the munitions factory. You know, all those colonials you've got building your torpedoes, they don't really like you. Yeah, duds. <gasps> I think you'll find they love guns. me. They love the crown in Canada, I'm just saying. Um, right, I'm not doing anything else. Uh, I'm just going to step back there and uh, wave goodbye to the rest of the fleet, I think. Okay, well, the last thing I have to go is my uh, writer flat cruisers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, let's, let's see. So they have to do the drift. There's nothing fancy before doing that. They're a mass of two. So one, two to there. And... One, two, two, there. Now, because I'm crippled, my speed goes down to six and my turn limit goes to four. Yep. So I'm, honestly... And you're um, locked as well, so you yes, can't you turn. Can't, you can't yes, turn. on that particular anyway. one. So I think he's just going to barrel forward the full six. Time to get right up in your face. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the other one, which isn't crippled, thankfully, is also going to barrel up, but it can barrel up an additional nine. So he can make it up to Yikes. here. They're fast. Without turning at all. Mm. Don't need to turn. Who needs rudders? All right, shootings. Mm. What have you got, Justin? I have a Verling Flak Array, Verling Auto Cannon, Broadsides, and a Spearshuler. Spearshuler. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't want to get that one wrong. <laughs> so it's a I torpedo. To, yeah. Oh, so it's a torpedo. Yes. So spearshulers. Okay, so I can get one of one torpedo into him here. He's past it here, and there's nothing out this way. Uh, my flak array. Uh, just let me double check names. Verling flak array yeah. and auto cannons. Yeah, What's the range on that? Uh... Oh, on the what? Top of the spear schluder. Um It's got a point blank. But it's a but it's a torpedo, so you can't target within five inches. Ah, so no you, torpedo for me. You need time to lock yep. in. Okay. Well, uh, regardless of that, it'll make life easier. It's one less thing to worry about. Yeah. Well, regardless of that, there will be two broadsides coming out, mm -hmm. both going into here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my arrays are, they're both at short range, uh, so they're point blank. So I'm going to pop both of them into here, but individually. And then my auto cannons are also going to go in here, but they will support each other. Okay. So they are they supporting each other or supporting the arrays? Uh, no, here's a question. Because it's a different named weapon, can they support? If they have the same qualities, then they can. They all have sustained. However, the autocannon is specifically for aerial units and skimming units. Can it still support in that instance? The other one is plain sustained. No, they can't. Okay. So they would have to fire independently. Okay. So in the unit, I have 
two of the flak arrays. I can do 11 or 17 in a shot, and the other ones, I can do two fives or a nine. I'll do, I'll do the 17 and I'll do the nine, just to keep things nice, simple, and clean. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, broadsides. So I can get a single broadside in to here, mm -hmm. but this one's out. And then I've got two broadsides that can support, they will support into here. So that's multiple targets, firing both sides of the broadside because I have targets on both sides, yeah? Maximizing those weapons, I like it. Okay. Right. Uh, 17, mere 17 to start. So there's six, seven, five, and five. So this should do something quite hefty, I hope. I hope not. Oh, oh I think it does. No. So was this the sustained? That's the, yes, sustained flak array. Okay. So let me start to move things around a little bit so I can see what I have to pick from. So I've got three blanks, three heavies, so it'll just be three for the blanks. I'll be re-rolling. Okay, so I've got another roll out. So many of those, one, two, three, four, five more of those get rolled. Exploding dice. From Hell's Heart, I stab at thee. One more. Oh! One more. <laughs> Justin! And I'll do it. Okay, so let's tally this up. So there's eight, 12, 16. Uh, 16 becomes 20, uh, is 24, 25, 26, 27 points of damage. <sighs> Okay. That's a significant amount of damage. It is a lot, yes. I just had to get the dice one. So down. it's it's four damage right off the bat because yep. my armor's only six mm -hmm. and my citadel is eleven, so that's two criticals. It's two criticals. So instead of doing any critical rolls, we go straight to a catastrophic explosion, which ah. is another two points of so hull damage. damage. Okay. So poor Harry Hotspur <laughs> is uh is not looking Best pleased. Horrible explosions start wrecking the hull of that I ship. I tell you what, there's an awful lot of pilots who are very glad that they were launched <laughs> yeah. not a moment ago. Ooh. Are you sure? Because, you know, they might be landing on a tiny little archipelago just to, to spend the rest of their <laughs> That's fine. That, At least they're somewhere too large. Yeah. All right, so I've got another set of nine. Yep. And again into the hotspur. Yep. And it's aerial sustained, so I cannot do it. No, you can't do your rerolls on this one. Mm -hmm. But I do get a couple of explodings which I will gladly accept, and another one, and not another one. So there's six, nine, 13 damage. 13, okay. so that's another two damage. Another two damage. Which uh, I think is enough to sink it. It is, which means at least you don't get through all your critical that you would have oh, got. Yeah. I'm going to roll oh, it anyway, just to roll see what anyway. I did. Oh, yeah. that. Shredded defences. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. It's, it is worth doing it, actually, because if you've got a magazine explosion, that you could have done some damage to the... But, yeah. 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 No, uh, I lose one broadside because yep. that's gone. Mm. But I still no have now. the broadsides from the other side. Mm -hmm. so and were you, were you combining those broadsides? I was. And I was using the non-crippled ship for the primary. So it is just straight broadside. We don't have to worry about obscured for those two units there because they're aerial. Mm -hmm. So then they're, they're not going to cause so any problems. Start with six. They're all going to be point then, blank. Because the other ship is crippled, I only gain an additional two. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, not so good. What do we got here? So broadside has broadside and fusillade. If that does anything for me, Chris. It does. You get to re-roll all your counter results. Ah. So it's those two dice. Two dice to re-roll. Uh, for an additional two. So that will be eight damage total. Okay. Uh, so you'll beat my armor. I'll take a point of damage, mm -hmm. uh, which will actually be my second on that. Uh, but nothing else on toward there. Ah. Okay. Again, it is worth firing those off just to get that extra little chip. Of course it is. There's yeah. someone over that, that, that edge to being crippled. can really help, especially with what's coming up. Yeah. Well, we're at the end of their phase. There's nobody close enough to assault. Uh, no, but, I but do you have do have repair. repair. Yeah. Yes. So one dice looking for... Uh, two dice because it's a mass two. Ah, two dice and looking for... Counters. Okay. Shup. I got one counter. That means you can remove that critical counter. Okay. So apparently turning is good and cool again. <laughs> Just it's take something a while you can do, yes. Passive maintenance. 
So that, that's the end of all the activation phase. Mm -hmm. So we're on to the end phase. The first thing we do here is resolve SRS. Okay. Yes. Now we have interception. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get your aerial defense against the, the SRS. Okay, so this is the aerial defense of the ship that's being attacked. That's then. right. Um, and then um, nope. each, each ship, each SRS token that you have adds three dice to that pool. Okay, so I'm going to start with an aerial defense of four for the Newfoundland cruiser. Mm -hmm. And then I've got four SRS there. So an additional 12. Yes. It's a Six, good dice nine, pool. And 12. Quite so hefty. 16 dice. And am I looking for counters here? You are looking for counters, yes. Every three counters will destroy an SRS token. Ah. Oh. So we've one and four. So two, four, six, eight, nine. So three SRS counters nice. will be removed. Okay. That was a good roll. Two, three. I'll pop them out of the way. And then my own. Retreat. And they, yep, they get removed. Oh. Yep. <laughs> I'm to there. There's nowhere else to go to. <laughs> All right, so that leaves me with a grand total of five of these. Okay, so five uh, is uh, three times five is 15 dice. Mm -hmm. um, they have the piercing quality. Mm -hmm. Five. Okay, and I assume I'm looking for the hits because I'm being the aggressor. You are indeed. Can any was he rerolls or anything? Because I wouldn't say no. <laughs> Unfortunately not. I get that, and uh, three dice to... Explode up. Literally so. Okay. Mm, okay, that could have been that could have been more impressive, Justin. It mm. could have been. You've used all your luck on the, uh, the writers. <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. hot spare, by yeah, the way. There's, there's 12 anyhow. 12. So up uh, two points of damage, which will bring me to crippled. Yes. And one for my citadel. So yep, and it's piercing, so you do an additional critical hit as well. Oh, this is where it might get impressive. Okay, Steering so lock. you've got a reactor leak and navigation lock. Yeah. Okay. I believe one of those comes with a disorder level. Let me just check. Uh, and yes, the reactor leak gives it a level of disorder, which puts it from hazard to um, emergency, which is that one there. So does this one come off to be replaced yep. by or do they stack? No, yeah, it comes off from, to be replaced. It goes up a level okay. rather than adding more things to the table. Mm -hmm. And then uh, those SRS tokens are removed. You know, fly back to home base, gentlemen. Yep. You've done a good job today. And that's the end of the round. That's okay. everything. I think that really covers... Right. There is one little question I have for the SRS tokens. So now that they have flown home, Yes. The next time I activate that and launch them again, do I still have my full eight or you am do. I now down to five? No, you have your full... Your okay. full so we've got spares. Re rearm repair. Until repair. until that ship is then crippled and then that reduces it. Yeah. And that's it's a slightly um uh it, it represents the fact that there some of those have been destroyed throughout yep. the course of the mm -hmm. game. So it so that's why it's yep. there as a as a reduction when the when the ship's crippled. Understood. Yeah. So the end fears then we'd um discard any cards that we didn't want and replenish our hand. That's um, right finish off those bits and pieces and check for victory. Yep. Uh, and then we'd go into the new turn. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. That is how you play Dystopian Wars. If you have any questions, please drop them below and check out the other videos that we have on the site for Dystopian Wars. We've got a lot of fleet battles coming as well. If you haven't seen those already, have a look around. Uh, and hopefully that gets you in the mood for some naval combat in the Dystopian Age. Hi everybody, it's Dystopian Wars Week here at On Tabletop and we have two amazing prizes up for grabs. Our first prize is the Sturgenium Skies two-player starter set. For your chance to win, get your comments in on YouTube. Our second prize is the Hunt for the Prometheus two-player starter set. The winner for this prize will be chosen from comments on ontabletop.com. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.